Evening church, happy Friday. Got my cup of tea, let's make you laugh. My very own special tea cup. <laughs> so I'm sat in Joel's room, don't tell him. When they go off to their dads for the weekend, I uh, come into each of their rooms to do the, the check, you know, to make sure that all is clean, the beds are stripped, I can wash their bedding and uh, find the dirty stinking socks underneath the bed or apple cores, had, you know, all that sort of stuff. The stuff that mums do, I thought, well, while I was in here, I'd come and talk to you. So I've been reading this week. Um, uh, I'm doing a Bible study plan on version. If you haven't got the app, look into it, it's brilliant. And it helps you to be read a Bible reading, create a Bible reading habit. Because um, sometimes it's hard to read the Bible, isn't it? Um, so I find version really brilliant. Um, and I've been doing this plan called Finding Yourself in the Parables. And um, it, it gets us to look at the parables that Jesus talked about um, in different ways. And, you know, some of them are very, very familiar to us. You know, we've heard them and heard them. And, and as they say, familiarity breeds contempt. And so it's good to have a different person talking about the parables in a different way. So the one that I was looking at which kind of struck me today, was all about, um, in Matthew chapter 13, when Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, on the first reading of that, you go, oh, sure, that's nice, you know, he found a pearl, that's lovely. But delve a little bit deeper, if you go back to the the rules in Leviticus, um, I don't generally like Leviticus, but it, it talks a lot about different rules and stuff. And one of the rules is don't eat um, oysters or stuff that eats uh, fish and um, clams and that sort of thing that eats stuff from the bottom of the ocean. So Jewish people can't eat oysters which is where we find pearls so for the the people that heard this they went do you know what a pearl is of no great price to me this is this is nothing really you know this is a in amongst a, um, other parables where jesus was talking about um the lost sheep the lost coin and when there was a guy who found great treasure in a field and he went and sold everything he had and he bought the field this is in amongst all of that and, he, and it kind of got me thinking, why was Jesus talking about pearls when the audience that were listening had no value for them? It wasn't for them. This is the great thing. The Gentile culture had great value for pearls. So they understood that when you, when you found a pearl of great price, then they got it and they understood it. Now, in the Jewish culture, I am a Gentile woman. So Jesus said that he would sell everything that he had, the highest price that he could pay to gain me, a Gentile woman. That is a great, wonderful thing. But also, so you look at it from that angle of who Jesus was talking about, um, saying that, you know, there are people of great worth. Who do I look at? And my initial thought is, they're not of that great worth. The price that that uh, I need to pay to bring them into the kingdom is too high. Jesus is telling me to go a little bit further and see everybody as that, that great price, that great treasure that costs all we have. If Jesus is my rabbi, and I follow him, and I claim to be a follower of Jesus, then I need to seek out those people that in other people's eyes, perhaps, don't, are of no great value. They don't have a great worth as such. Yeah. Um, but Jesus says, actually, you do. Because I know that the first hearers of this parable would have considered me of very little value as a woman, as a Gentile, and so I need to hear what Jesus is saying about that. So shall we pray? Because I know that God 
loves to seek those that other people don't want to pursue. He runs after the lost, the least, the forgotten, the betrayed, the orphans and the widows. What is it, O oh God, that we need to do to love God, act justly and walk humbly? That's what we need to do. So let's pray. Father, I thank you that you sought us, that you paid the highest price for us, that you gave your life so that we could be in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, that by dying on the cross, you took away my sin, that there is no condemnation in Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that you saw the value in me in us when others didn't. I thank you that you pursued us before we'd even contemplated you. And Father, I pray that you would give us your heart, that we would seek out those that the world has the viewpoint of a lack of value and to show them that you love them, that you chose them, that you call them, that we would be your voice and your hands to reach out to those. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a great evening.